Thank you, Madam Deputy Speaker. First of all, can I join with all those who have paid tribute to Alexei Navalny, who, in the wake of an assassination attempt, returned to stand with his fellow countrymen against Putin's tyranny, knowing full well what that might mean for him and his family. He put his country and his countrymen before himself. Can I also remind the House that the Government will again outline its position on the very serious matter of Israel and Gaza in a written ministerial statement soon. Can I say to the Honourable Lady opposite that I would join her firstly in her thanks to our security services, particularly those of the House authorities in keeping us safe and point to our record on adapting legislation to cope with uh, the evolving nature of some pretty awful protests that uh, not just MPs but the general public have been putting up with. The work that we have been doing in the House on social media, the new services in the House of Commons Library and the Defending Democracy Task Force, it would be nice to have the opposition's support in those matters, in particular the legislation uh, that we will bring forward in the future. I want to say that this House will never bow to extremists, threats or intimidation. It has not, it will not, it must not. And I would ask all honourable members not to do this House a further disservice by suggesting that the shameful events that took place yesterday were anything other than party politics on behalf of the Let me bring the House up to date. Two significant things happened yesterday, and I'm not sure all honourable members have clocked. Firstly, it fell to the government benches to defend the rights of a minority party in this House. If the honourable lady opposite cannot bring herself to reflect on the appalling consequences of her party's actions yesterday, if she cannot rise above the narrow and immediate needs of her weak and fickle leader, to this House as its shadow leader, perhaps she might like to reflect on the damage her party has done to the office of the Speaker. I would never have done to him what the Labour Party have done to him. Secondly, we have seen into the heart of Labour's leadership. Nothing is more important than the interests of the Labour Party. The Labour Party before principle. The Labour Party before individual rights. The Labour Party before the reputation and honour of the decent man that sits in Speaker's chair. The Labour Party before fairness, integrity and democracy. In Rochdale, the Labour Party before a zero-tolerance policy towards anti-Semitism. Many of us knew this about the Labour leader. I saw it in his frustration of our country getting the best deal possible when we left the EU. The Labour Party before country. I have to tell the Honourable Lady opposite. The people of this country don't have a copy of standing orders of this House lying around their house. They haven't been chatting about parliamentary procedure over their cornflakes this morning, but they value fairness. They want the rights of all to be protected. They cannot abide bullies and cheats. They cannot abide people who trash our nation or fail to defend its interests or the institutions that protect them. 
We often, on this side of this House, rightly criticise the former leader of the Labour Party for the things he stood for and for being wrong on those matters. But I will tell you one thing about the former leader of the Labour Party. At least he thought he was right on those matters. The current leader of the Labour Party is quite happy to do what he knows to be wrong. He puts the interests of the Labour Party before the interests of the British people. It's the Labour leader that doesn't get Britain, and the past week has shown that he is not fit to lead it. Yeah.